How's it going? This is Joe Intel. Today we're going to be taking a look at the measurements for the Heiko Ambient 44F on-wall speaker. And this is an interesting speaker in that it's an MTM design and you can flip it either vertically or use it horizontally as a center channel. Let's take a look and see how this measures in both situations. I'm also curious to see how it measures when it's not on wall versus when it's on wall to see what some of those differences are. Of course, with this type of speaker, you're gonna be using it on wall. That's what it's made to do. It has brackets and that's the whole purpose of this thing. But anyway, I'm just kind of curious to see what happens if you don't have it on the wall. So here are some of the various measurements I took. And so this is an in-room measurement of the speaker. And so you can see below 500 Hertz, it's a little bit jaggedy and that's mostly for my room. It's not exactly how the speaker would measure anechoically, but above 500 Hertz, I can kind of trust this data more than below 500 Hertz. So I did measure each driver individually just to kind of see the response of those. And you can see here that the woofer actually may not be falling off like this. This could be caused by my room. I'm not too sure without anechoic data, it's hard to tell. But if that's true, this is uh, how it would look if I merge the two. And you can see that that's kind of a V-shaped response if I've ever seen one. That isn't what I measured when I measured it just in my room, the base response was rather flat, in which case, instead of a V-shaped response, I would say this is a rising response here above two kilohertz. You can tell that two kilohertz, there's a dip, and usually that's what happens, that's where the crossover is. So again, this is a listening window response of that speaker, meaning I'm taking the angle, let's say 30 degrees horizontally and 10 degrees up and down, and this is the type of response I was seeing. Now I got a less smooth response when I was just on axis, I kept the mic straight. It wasn't as smooth, you can see some ups and downs here. So again, this is the response pulled away from the walls, right? So I just had it standing on a stand, and you can kind of see what's happening here. There's some ups and downs on the on-axis response, but it tended to smooth out if you weren't just directly on axis. So it seems to me that they didn't optimize for you to just be right dead center to that tweeter. Although in the case of a center channel, it's very possible that you might be sitting right there in the middle where the tweeter is. So here we're taking a look at what happens if I have the speaker standing vertically and I go 30 degrees off axis. So imagine here's a speaker and then 45 degrees is this way, 30 degrees is not as much. That's a typical area where you might be in relation to some speakers. So here's how that looks. And first thing I notice, it is not as smooth. And the top end treble response, instead of a rising response, it drops down, which is more likely what you may want to hear. Now, how far this falls off, you may start to lose detail. So you don't want to lose too much. And above 10 kilohertz, I see that it does start to drop off a lot. The response gets a little bit less smooth here in the mid-range. Now this is a MTM design, meaning it's a mid-range tweeter mid-range. My buddy Aaron has a video about why that's not optimal to have an MTM design for center channel speakers, but that's with the speaker laying horizontally. This time we had it vertically, but let's actually take a look at what happens when we do go vertically off axis, same 30 degrees, except this time here's a speaker and we go 30 degrees above the optimal axis which I believe to be between the tweeter and the mid range. There's two mid ranges, so you have to pick one, right? But between that would be the optimal angle. If you go 30 degrees up, you'll see a response like this one. Now, what do I notice here is that there is a much deeper dip here at the crossover frequency. The other thing you notice is the treble response didn't drop as much as the previous measurement. If you're like me and if you have an acoustic transparent screen, you can actually put this horizontally, vertically, it doesn't really matter. And so what you wanna take into consideration is what are you more likely to do? Are you more likely to move side to side? Or if you have various seats that are next to you, you wanna have good consistency between the seat to the right, to the left, etc. versus how often do you think you're gonna be moving up and down, you know, 30 degrees. I mean, that's a pretty drastic change. So I would say you're more likely to move horizontally, in which case, which one of these two would be better, right? So let's say for example, this one was with a speaker vertically and moving side to side would provide you with this response. Now compare that with the listening window response. And 
it looks different, but it's flatter, I guess you could say. Uh, you get more of a treble drop off when you move 30 degrees side to side. But let's take a look at the other one. If you had it placed horizontally and you moved that side to side, then you would maintain a similar treble response to the listening window response, but you have a bigger dip here in the mid range to upper mid range around two kilohertz. So that's kind of the trade off there. Now, depending on how many seats you have or how wide your couch is, you may be more than 30 degrees off. And so I wanted to take a look at 50 degrees and see how that kind of measured. So this wasn't exact, I wasn't, you know, being extremely precise, but I just want to kind of get an idea. So again, if I had the speaker standing vertically, 50 degrees horizontally, all right? So it's vertical, you're moving side to side, let's say from one seat to another, and you get a response like this. Now you start to see that again, lots of dips, ups and downs. If I were to take that same speaker, turn it sideways and then move side to side, how would that look? I would get a response somewhat like this. Now this, what I'm starting to see here is even though the treble response is smoother, meaning it, it looks more similar to the listening window response that I saw where you're not really far off axis, but the trade-off is that you get this really deep and wide dip. So when you get a dip that is both deep and wide, that is, that is pretty audible. And so if I had to take a look at these two, neither are perfect, but I would say that this has less of a dip, even though it has more peaks, it's really tough to tell without listening. And, um, but I'm inclined to say that I would probably choose this one. You know, it does have a lot of peaks and, and dips here, but none of them are quite as wide as this one, right? So this is all the way from here to here, which is a big, big difference. So the whole point of this is that you may want to experiment with a center channel that's vertical or horizontal if you have the opportunity, if you have an acoustic transparent screen, you know, it's gonna depend on the speaker. This is important for this particular speaker because you can use this as both a center channel or you can use it as left or right speakers flanking the side of your TV. Just know that even if you plan on using that configuration, even if the speakers are exactly the same, it doesn't mean that you're gonna get the same sound coming out of it depending on where you're sitting. All right, so that's very interesting. So the bass does something weird in my in-room response where it kind of just really drops off starting around 155 and then drops down to here. And then again, it drops down further. So I'm not sure exactly what's causing that. Maybe the width of the baffle, I'm not sure exactly. But if I were to look based on this response, the peak here is what, 89 dB? It's looking like an F3 of around 69 decibels. So F3 is how you measure when the bass starts to roll off drastically. Their website claims something maybe in the 40s, 45, I believe. And so I'm not seeing that here in this measurement. Not that it matters too much. I don't think that you would wanna use this without any sub, definitely not. You definitely wanna use these with subs. The only thing that I look for is that it is capable of playing down to 80 Hertz. And these look like they do. Now in my listening demo, I did play the speaker by itself. And I mean, it was pretty obvious they don't have a ton of bass. And that's not a huge surprise because this is a very thin enclosure, even though it may look wide, it's very thin. I think something around four inches. If you th consider a four inch thick box, considering that the box has thickness, the wood has thickness itself, that's not very much space inside there. And so you have some trade-offs when you go that route. So the other question I had was what happens when you put these on the wall? And so that's exactly what I did. And so here is off the wall here, oh, bands. And here's the same measurement with it on the wall. Whoa, all right, so you see here above, let's say above 600 Hertz, it's all pretty much the same, right? You don't see anything weird happening there, but below that from about 350 Hertz to 600 Hertz, you see this dip here, and that is about five decibels and that's around the lower mid-range area, so centered around 400 hertz. The other thing that you'll notice is there is also another dip here from about 156 hertz 
to 330 hertz there's another less drastic dip but still pretty wide and so what's causing that i believe that is caused by the nearby wall so when you have a speaker near a wall it also radiates sound backwards especially in the lower frequencies and combines with the sound coming forward some of those waves cancel with the sounds going forward and that's what you're seeing here so this is actually something you can calculate based on distance and so we'll do that in a full review and see how close we get to these actual dips let's take a look at 30 degrees horizontally now on wall you notice that it didn't change very much when i moved side to side so again vertical and if you moved side to side this way okay so not very much variation now if i moved up and down 30 degrees you'd get a response again not as far off right so we see more variation when it's not on the wall for some reason i'm not sure exactly why but the other thing i did notice is there was some kind of bump here around 300 hertz okay now let's take a look at what happens if i go even further off axis so again vertically and i move 50 degrees off axis this way right so if this is center if that's 45 that's about 50 right there right so 50 degrees horizontally you get a response kind of like this again not extremely bad like i'm not seeing a huge difference right you're noticing there's a drop in treble which we expect as you go off axis now the question is is that better than if you have it vertical and you move either above 50 degrees or below 50 degrees and that would be the same as if you took the speaker flipped it horizontally and again went 50 degrees this way or this way and let's take a look at that right look at how deep and how wide this dip is centered at the crossover frequency and another one here what have we learned from this we've learned that for this particular speaker and i believe other mtm designs so anything with a mid-range tweet or mid-range i think that you may find that if you can setting that up vertically would be superior to having it horizontally now you may not have the option in case you're putting this under a projector like i am i have no choice right that's the way i have to have it so these are the compromises that we have to make now the problem with not having a center channel is the dialogue isn't anchored to the screen depending on where you're sitting so if you're sitting far to the left everything is going to move to the left etc so there is a use case for a center channel but if this is how it responds off axis, you may think like, hmm, maybe I don't want that. Uh, DSP can help somewhat, but again, these are the compromises that you have to make. So if you want the dialogue dead center, well, the problem is if you're far off axis, it's still not gonna be great because you're gonna have a dip in the mid range area. As you see here, the dip that we're seeing when you have it placed horizontally, like I have in this picture right here, is uh you get a dip around 420 hertz and then this big dip here centered at two kilohertz and the problem is that you can't really just boost this here and you can't do that because what if you just boosted here then the on axis response would have extra mid-range there so the person who's sitting in the center is going to hear more mid-range so it's a tough one it's a tough one tough decision the whole purpose of what i do is to give you more information to judge for yourself what you may or may not want to do i'm not here to kind of convince you that you should or shouldn't i'm just here to present the information so that you can make that decision for yourself some people may just want my opinion i would take that with a grain of salt just because for me i would rather have the center there even though it's less optimal as you go off axis because it's that way anyway without the center channel without the center channel as you f go further off axis you might have a more consistent tonality when you move left and right without the center channel but the image really shifts and for me what i'm mainly using this for is to watch movies in which case i'd rather just have the center channel to anchor it more right so it's very tricky it's very tricky of course i want perfection you rarely get that without significant compromise in one way or another all right so i did measure the drivers individually near field and so here is the tweeter 
here's woofer number one and woofer number two. Now these are lower in volume. I just kind of showed it here so you can see how they relate to each other. Um, you can see where the crossover is here around two kilohertz. And you can see the response of the woofer itself here. I also did a near field measurement of the port itself. And here's something interesting that I found was when I measure the port, I'm not sure if this was, you know, noise that I was getting from air hitting the microphone. I'm not sure, but I wouldn't expect that around this area. But it seemed like there may have been some leakage of some sort. I don't know if it's a resonance, what was coming through, but this was coming through the port. In which case, if you look at the woofers, other than this little bump here, which I believe to be just noise, I don't see any real extra bass coming through. So the whole point being, if this is some resonance coming through that port, because it's not extending the bass out that much further, I would say it might even be better just to plug those ports just for a cleaner sound. If it's not gonna add that much bass, might as well plug the ports. So there you have it. Those were the measurements for the Heiko Ambient 44F on-wall speaker. I hope you learned something. I did. Look out for the full review of this speaker coming up in the next couple of days. I also have another binaural video comparing how my system sounded with and without this center channel speaker in my system. Anyway, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to like, subscribe, ring the bell to be notified when I upload new videos. That's it. Take care. Bye-bye.